What's going on guys and welcome to my Tekken 7 tier list video. Today we're going to be ranking the characters in Tekken 7. Uh, as you can see we actually have quite a few characters that are not in Tekken 7 from previous games. That's because this is a just Tekken character in general tier list but I personally will only be ranking characters from Tekken 7 because I'm going to be honest guys I'm a bit of a casual. Tekken 7 is my first and only Tekken game that I've ever played. I have a couple of other ones that I own, but I've never really gotten around to playing them. So, we're going to be ranking the characters from the game that I have played, the characters that I do have experience with, and I don't believe this tier list has a picture of the newest DLC character that just dropped. Actually, no, there she is. Never mind. Uh, I was worried that they may not have that because I saw that they have the uh, Kunimitsu's daughter. Um, but I wasn't sure that they had the brand new character, but they do, so that'll be fine. I'll be able to rank her as well. But, yeah, we're just going to be ranking some Tekken 7 characters. Let's just roll right into it. Alright, so first person I wanted to get onto the list was Yoshimitsu. You see here, we have, you know, Fuck My Life tier, I only play these characters for fun, Alright, I guess, Noise, and Easy Wins. These are the characters that, um... You know, you get that easy W when you play. Uh, and, yeah, basically I'll just rank these characters off of how they look. Like, do they appeal to me aesthetically? But more importantly, as you could probably guess from the tier list, is how good am I with these characters? And, uh, of course, good is relative because if I actually ranked them by how good I was, considering how good I am at the game, of course, every character would be in the Fuck My Life tier because I'm trash. But... We're talking about not performance as in like a general standard, but performance specifically to me. So it'll be how much I like the characters, you know, as far as like their personality and stuff, their aesthetics. But the main driving force will, of course, be how good am I at those characters? How good am I at fighting people with those characters? So for Yoshimitsu, I think I'm going to put him in the noise tier. I like his differing designs and stuff. His backstory is pretty cool. How he's got his rivalry with Brian and how he's like this mastered ninja or whatever. And of course, he is very similar to the Yoshimitsu from Soul Calibur. You know, Tekken's almost sister game. You know, it's it's rival in the gaming industry. This is a weapon fighting game from Bandai Namco. And uh, of course, or excuse me, uh, Soul Calibur is the weapon fighting game from Bandai Namco. And this is more like the fist fighting game. Uh, make no mistake, though, these two characters are not the same. The Yoshimitsu from Soul Calibur is a different person from this Yoshimitsu. They they are part of the same ninja clan, and they hold the same rank. So that's why they're similar in their fighting style and their wacky appearances, but they are not the same character. So I find, uh, I find him to be an interesting character in backstory. I like his really cool and unique designs, but um, the reason why I wouldn't put him in easy wins... I'm decent with Yoshimitsu, but... He's a bit gimmicky. That's his only problem. He's got a lot of gimmick moves. A lot of gimmick moves which kind of weigh him down. Um, but in overall terms of things like uh, he's got great reach. He's got a lot of uh, versatility. So he's not a bad character. He's just a little too complex for my small smooth brain. Uh, next we'll go over Dragonoff. I believe he's here on the second row or something like that. Uh, while I'm looking for him. Yeah, I mean Dragonoff is a pretty good character. I'm usually better at him if I'm able to rush the person I'm fighting. Um, but as far as his backstory and stuff, I find I find he leaves a bit to be desired in terms of backstory and character. His character doesn't specifically pop out to me. You know, he's as you can see, I'm having a fucking hell of a time trying to find him on here. Um, you guys have probably seen him and pointed him out to me like a million times over by now, but. Uh, yeah, his design is a bit lackluster. His story, I don't actually really know a whole lot about Dragonov's story. I guess that's more so on me for not looking into it, but he never really just struck me as a character that I would go the distance for actually learning stuff about him. He's he's pretty cool, and I like his different like moves and stuff, and you know his his sambo is pretty cool. But yeah, I'm decent with the character, but he doesn't really pop for me. So next we'll do Huarang. Now Huarang is cool. I like the character. I like the backstory. I like the design. And I'm pretty decent with the character. Um, I can't in good conscience put him in easy W. I don't think he's an easy W level character. There are a few on here, believe me. Um, but I think he sits very nicely in noise. So yeah, we got the, the 
Taekwondo kicks from Huarang, and I, I like his different transition from, like, you know, oh, he's, like, a bright young student, and uh, he's, like, aspiring to be this great martial artist, and, you know, now he's more of, maybe not, like, a badass, but, like, he's he's more serious than he was, but um, now we can move on to martial law. Martial law. <laughs> okay, this may come as a shock to you guys, but I'm actually putting him in easy W tier. Uh, he's <laughs> a really fun character to play. He's very fun to kind of get your hands off. He's got a lot of different cool techniques that combo really well into each other. I've, I've always found it very easy to get off like decent combos with uh, martial law. But of course, one of my favorite martial artists in all of history is Bruce Lee, and he is very heavily inspired by Bruce Lee. So not only is he a fun character, not only is he, uh, you know, fun to play, but as far as like his character, like his actual personality, he, him and him and Paul are always getting up to hijinks and stupid stuff, and they're good-hearted goofs. I, I I do enjoy the personality of the character. I enjoy playing the character. Everything hits green for me. It's all go go go. And he's based off of Bruce Lee, so lots of points in his department. I can see him fitting quite nicely in the Easy W tier. Next up, we'll do Shaheen, if I remember correctly. I, I gave this list a glance earlier, just to make sure it had all the characters. Um, Shaheen, there he is. Okay, uh, he practices a pretty unique martial arts style. It's like uh, Israeli military style. Um... But, I kind of feel bad in saying this, I feel like he's like a knockoff Rashid. Like, Rashid has so much character, and uh, um, he, he looks like such an interesting character, you know. His personality is interesting, he's like this very arrogant prince type. Um, and it just seems, he, he was one of the, definitely one of the more interesting characters, and definitely one of the more intriguing characters that was added to the Street Fighter V roster. Uh, one of the new characters, not a returning original, but Rashid never really hit like that, you know, Rashid was kind of like, um, I don't know, he seemed very generic, he never really popped out to me as being that interesting, I think the most interesting thing about, um, Shaheen there is that he, uh, he has that falcon, I think that falcon is pretty cool, um, I looked a little bit into his backstory, but again, nothing really popped out, I think he was a bodyguard, for like an oil tycoon back in the Middle East. I don't remember for sure, but unfortunately, we're going to have to plop him in the I only play these for fun because I mean, it's fun to learn a new character and stuff like that and pick up a character that you haven't played before, but <laughs> I'm not going to play him if I'm trying to get a W in a match. I'm not going to play him if I'm there to have a good time, you know, just just goofing off, winning, and having a great time. That's more this tier. And I'm not even particularly that good with him, so he wouldn't even fit in the Dragonoff tier. And the character the, themselves, like the personality and the design, it's about the same level as Dragonoff, so not a, not a whole lot of green lights with that one. Next up is Akuma, and uh, yeah, duh, I don't think anybody should be surprised by this, but he is easily one of my... Uh, best characters in the game, maybe not my favorite. I do like that they put a Street Fighter character in Tekken. It seems like the obvious crossover, you know. Um, so it was very cool. That that was the main reason I think why I bought Tekken Seven was like, not only do I like fighting games, so I think I would like Tekken, but I think Akuma being in the game and incorporated into the actual story, I think that kind of put Tekken Seven over the edge for me. I think that was like, that was the moment when I was like, I want to get Tekken Seven. So Akuma was the whole reason why I got into the franchise, and you know I'm, I'm very thankful for that because it's a very cool franchise with a lot of interesting characters, and of course I'm an avid fan of uh, martial arts in general, but fighting games in particular. Uh, but the character is very good. He's got a lot of ranged options. He's got a lot of uh, movement options, uh, and he's like a very good combo character. Uh, he's an annoying fucking zoning character, so uh, that that does happen from time to time. But if you are not on the receiving end of the zoning then he can easily be one of the best characters in the roster, at least in my opinion. Uh, and of course, it's Akuma. He's one of the most badass characters in Street Fighter, so I think putting him here is definitely doing him justice. I think that's a that's an easy W for him. And next, we'll go to Kazuya. Oh, boy. Kazuya. Guys, I'm sorry. He just... Um... The character is interesting, but I feel like, um, especially, uh, you know, spoilers for the ending of Tekken 7, 
Um, especially what with uh, what happened at the end of the game when he killed Heihachi. You know, everyone loves Heihachi. You know, it, he may be like a, an asshole and he may be a genuinely bad person sometimes, but after you figure out all the backstory and stuff like that, it seems like it seems like everybody's kind of a victim of of fate there. But uh, oh, damn, Kazuya just makes me so mad with how dumb he is sometimes. Like like he's not like he's not repeating the same mistakes as his father. And I know I know that the devil genes are corrupting him and making him ugly. Uh, but still, I mean, in terms of his personality, he kind of makes me upset. It, it's that fucking haircut. Akoya makes me upset. Kazuya makes me upset. It's all these pinhead ass dudes here with these stupid haircuts. Okay, it's it's them. They've got some kind of disease that makes them assholes. Uh, but more to the point. Um, the character itself, uh, I gotta admit, I'm not great with Kazuya, even in, like, casual standards. I don't think I could do very well, <laughs> you know, going up against, you know, online players with Kazuya. Uh, I'm decent against bots, like, high-level bots, but, you know, there's easy ways to cheese bots and stuff, and there's, you know, it's, there's spamming and stuff like that. I, I just can't think of any decent strategies that I could pull off with Kazuya, so, uh, he's alright, I guess. Next up is the big man himself, the man, the myth, the legend, Heihachi Mishima. Uh, where are you at? There you go. Um, sucks that he died. He was a really cool character. Um, but Heihachi. Heihachi is actually a pretty powerful character. Even if you don't really know how to play him. I'm thinking of putting him in noise. Um, he's a pretty powerful character even if you don't know how to play him. So that's, that's a solid thing in his defense. And he's a very cool character, especially with the backstory that they... Uh, they introduced in Tekken 7, like his whole spiel with his wife, uh, that, that, that all was interesting, so it makes the character, you know, interesting, which is what you want your character to be like, you want them to have a likable personality, depending on their role they play in the game, of course he's a villain, but he, I still find him to be somewhat charming, in like a goofy villain type of way, because most of the time, his, his plans <laughs> go haywire, like, um, like, uh, I can't remember which Tekken game it was, but when he developed the uh, the potion to make him young again, and he's like, ah, oh, yes, but then it turned him into a grizzly bear. Just stuff like that. Stupid shit like that. Makes me laugh, because he's like a goofy cartoon villain, but he's also like a badass. So, I, you know, I find that cool. Uh, and again, he's another one that kind of became a victim of fate because of what happened to his wife. But, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. It kind of sucks that his character is that of a bad guy but i think he's probably one of the best bad guys uh in the game so uh yeah i think heihachi deserves a noise tier good character good personality good design the aesthetic is is so iconic to tekken um and he's a he's a good player to play or excuse me he's a good character to play uh all right so next up is lars lars is interesting i remember he was a crossover character in one of the uh Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm games. I think it was Storm 3. Um, yeah, Lars. I'm not that good with him. I always find that my my pacing is wrong with Lars and my distance is wrong with Lars. I don't think I'm going to put him in the noise tier. I'm, I, I'm, I'm not good enough with the character to justify the noise tier. But I like the character. I like his personality. He's, he's as close to like a Jonathan Joestar type good guy that there is in Tekken that I can think of off the top of my head. Uh, the kind of super lawful good uh, type character, goody two shoes, you know, borderline. I think I think I'll, I'll put him in the all right. I guess he he'd be on the higher end of all right. I guess maybe even the best out of them. But I'm not really good with the character. The design is uh, 50 50. It's like a hit or miss with me. Like it looks okay, but sometimes I'm like, <laughs> who did this to you? Who dressed you today? <laughs> Who cut your hair? What is wrong with you? Why do you look like that? And I feel bad for thinking that because uh, personality, he's like a very high, like a 9 or a 10, you know, he's a great guy. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of 50-50 on the look, and I am not digging the character. I always find that I have to get in too often, too much, and I have to constantly being applying a pressure I just turned Italian there. I'm a constantly applying a pressure. Uh, no, I, I have to constantly be, or be the one to apply pressure, and that's just not my play style. I like to play, you know, like a medium range. You know, I, I like the option to be able to 
in fight or out fight i don't want to constantly be applying pressure constantly be the one getting in because i usually mess up my timing and i get fucked up and thrown away so lars i'm not too great with as a as a player but as a character i find him to be a cool character next up is jack seven okay okay now here's the thing about jack seven whether there's um, sergeant jack or whatever it's called uh it's the thing about jack seven jack seven i think the character is kind of i like the funny stuff that happens with him like something he's kind of like hey hachi where he's kind of a bad guy uh the jack series some of them are good some of them are bad um generally speaking they they tend to be on the bad side definitely not put him in this tier no um i think i'll put him in uh, i'll put him in all right i guess and the reason i do that is because the design is meh it's okay it's it's unique but i don't know if it's good i don't know if i particularly like it um but the design is what it is uh it's i guess it's good for like a robot person you know of course um and there's a lot of funny stuff they do with his design like since his legs are so tiny he has a couple of moves that incorporate that uh and also the the moves incorporate his general like robot kind of uh, spiel so that's interesting but on the whole the only reason i wouldn't put him in i only play these for fun is because the character is you know stereotypical robot bad guy army uh the personality yeah uh the aesthetic is all right but there are so many fun ways to cheese with this character he has so many cheese moves and, you know, a good enough player is, of course, going to be able to easily handle that. But just being able to dominate my way through casual and, and through, you know, most level of bots. You know, I can just sit there and spam some of the dumbest shit. And it always works because it's like, how do I how do I deal with that? Who are you? Why are you playing like this? This is not fun for anyone. Do you, is, is this game fun for you to sit there and spam that garbage move over and over? And then I think to myself, I'm like, is it fun? And it doesn't take me long to come to the conclusion that, yes, dominating people with dumb shit is always fun. Don't let anybody ever tell you otherwise. But that's Jack7 for me. So next we have Lee Chao Lan. I must admit, I know that's Violet, but I wonder if they have a separate character for Lee as I'm scanning the screen. Um, I'll, I'll give it a once over and then I'll use Violet if I can't find him. Lee! Lee is probably one of my favorite characters in the entirety of Tekken. There he is. Uh, and now, it isn't for any other reason other than he was the first ever Tekken character I played, and I I can't say I mastered him, but I got as close to mastering him as I've ever gotten to a character. Uh, I'll put him in the... Oh, actually... Mm, I, did, I did preface this that this will be dictated by my own personal experience so i think i will put lee chow lan in easy w tier he's got really good range he's good for a, a kind of mid-range fighter because he's always using like primarily kicks his kicks are his strong point uh in my opinion personally at least um so it's good because you'll you'll be able to outrange a lot of characters um and my timing tends to be better when i'm fighting from the mid-range uh, but also, he is just, uh, he, I think he's a great character. He's kind of like the, um, oh, I don't know how to describe, like, the character archetype. But, like, he is a good guy, but he's, like, mischievous. You know, he's he's always doing, like, pranks and stuff and, and joking around and stuff. I mean, he's, he's balls to the wall serious when it comes down to brass tacks. But you know, he's never so serious about everything. He's always treating life a bit like a joke. And... You know, I can see why. You know, he was adopted by Heihachi to serve as a rival for Kazuya. So, you know, his whole life he's just been compared to Kazuya over and over and over. So, I get how that can... If you treat life too seriously, I can I can get how that could be bad for someone's mental health. But he's taken it in stride. He's this super rich millionaire playboy. Uh, he's just a fun character for me. And I, I, I like playing him. I like seeing him in cutscenes and... All that different stuff. I like him in Tekken. So I think he, he deserves to be in the easy W tier. If not only for my own personal belief. Next we'll go with Kuma. Another kind of funny cartoon-esque villain. Uh, I'll actually put him in the noise tier. He actually deserves to be in noise. Because uh, you know that he, he is a pretty good character. I think I'm pretty decent at him. I, I, I like doing like mix-ups like, oh, attack mid, attack high or whatever, and then go for those little crouch swipes that he does. 
Uh, he's got a lot of decent grapples, as you'd expect from a grizzly bear. He's got lots of like sharp claws and teeth and everything. But uh, oh, also, I do like his whole thing with like he's got like a uh, like a rivalry with Paul, or am I thinking of Panda? I think I'm thinking of Panda. Um, but of course, he does have that thing with Panda where he's like um, you know constantly vying for her love attention, and she just completely disregards him. That's a funny you know comedic romantic cliche thing in there. So I do appreciate that. Um, the aesthetic, you know, he's a grizzly bear. He looks very, like, I think they did a very good job on, like, the fur, making it look so good. I, I, I think he, he looks excellent. I think they did a really good job on the design and the aesthetic for the grizzly bear. Uh, it's as simple a design as you'd expect from just a grizzly bear, but just the detail and, and, like, how good the graphics look. I think they knocked that one out of the park there. Uh, I also have the same opinion about Panda, but we'll get there when we get there. But more into the point, I'm pretty good with the character. You would be shocked what I can do with that trout bat that he's got. Um, but he's 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 a good character. I like playing him. Uh, I like the personality. So I think I think Noyce is justified there. I don't think he's easy W tier, but he's definitely not all right. I guess he's a little a little better than that. So we'll move on to Miguel Caballera de Rojo. And as you can tell by the fact that I'm able to remember his full name despite admittedly not playing Tekken for quite a long time. I think the last time I played Tekken was when uh, Faku Rum was released. There he is. Um, but Miguel Caballera de Rojo. Easy W tier. I love some of his shit. Uh, I've, I like memorized a lot of his moves. Uh, I've, I've learned a lot about his backstory. His backstory admittedly is a bit shallow. Uh, he's like this angry street fighting guy from Spain, um, and when his sister dies in a bombing caused by Kazuya, you know, he dedicates his whole life on revenge to, to get Kazuya back for killing his sister on his, on her wedding day, and, you know, it's a very simple motivation, very one-dimensional, shallow, but the character design is very interesting, the kind of swagger in the air about Miguel is, is, uh, very cool, I think he's a very cool character, um, He's like a, I don't know, you could almost describe him as like a good guy thug, you know? And I always find those types of characters interesting, like Hanayama from Baki. Um, can't really think of another one off the top of my head. But, you know, that that kind of archetype of character, the, the good guy thug. Uh, I think he his swagger is very cool. I think his outfit very accurately, you know, depicts like a Spanish, you know, thug. You know, like like he's got like the fur-lined coat. He's got like the open sh uh, open chest shirt. He's very aesthetically uh, aligned with his archetype. I think it's it's a great look for him. Uh, I like how the character acts and stuff like that. But the the coolest thing for me, and I know a lot of other characters have this on the list, but his one hit move, where like if you land it, like you got to charge it up. But if you land it, it's a one hit knockout. That cool, or that cool, that move is so cool to me. He just kind of, he like laughs over his shoulder, kind of shakes his hand, and he just struts up to you and pow, right in the kisser. You're out. It's 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 over. That is so cool to me. Uh, it's it's nothing like, for example, Yoshimitsu's where he's like doing a weird dance and shaking his uh, sword over his shoulder, and then he brings it down and slices you, and you're dead in one hit. It, it just, even the move... Is aesthetically aligned with his character type so i think he deserves an easy w tier next we'll go with bob i know bob's got a lot of history with the game he's become pretty synonymous with tekken as well but i must admit i'm not exactly partial to the character i think he's all right but the style is leaves a bit to be desired if i remember correctly he practices like karate combined with like his well his tagline you know speed and weight um, I think he's a pretty cool character, but I never really got into his personality. I never really got, you know, good with the character. I guess I'm not bad, but uh, I, I guess in both backstory and personality and how good I am with the character, I guess you could say I'm all right, I guess. <laughs> I'm so funny. All right, next up is Brian Fury. Brian Fury is a really good bad guy. He's a very kind of stereotypical bad guy. He's like a cyborg crazy villain guy, but he's a very good bad guy. A bit one-dimensional, but that's okay for bad guys sometimes. Um, a common trend recently in a lot of different media is that we always have to see the bad guy's point of view. 
you know, we have to humanize the bad guys so that there's, like, more complex emotions going on than hero must beat bad guy. But in the case of Brian Fury, every now and then, some dude that's just bad is good. You know, it's it doesn't always have to be a case like uh, like old Zangiev. Uh, just because you're a bad guy does not mean you're a bad guy. It, it doesn't always have to be like that. Sometimes, if you're a bad guy, you're just a bad person. Uh, so I do enjoy Brian in that aspect. But what really launches him from All Right, I guess, to Noise is he's got a pretty damn good style. His kickboxing in Tekken is pretty effective. It's good. It's especially good for medium type uh, players, which I am. I fight from a medium distance because he can check with his kicks. He's very good at keeping people at a distance with his kicks. And if they do close in on him, he's good at applying pressure because of his boxing. I mean, it's literally using the two parts of his style, kickboxing, to their fullest and best intended extent. So he keeps people away and he checks people from a mid distance and, you know, of course, attacks people from a mid-distance with his kicks, but he can also run up, apply pressure, and, you know, do a good job of kind of evading and blocking and countering. He's just got a really good style. Uh, it's really fun to play. Uh, it's a bit basic, but that's okay, because sometimes effective is fun in of itself, so I think Noise is a pretty good place to put him. Next up is King. Not Armored King, not quite yet, but King. A very fun character, if I do say so myself. Uh, I think I'm going to also put him in Noise. Uh, I, I'm glad that we have no uh, Fuck My Life's yet. Uh, Shaheen just barely avoided it, because he's not that bad of a character, really. Um, but, yeah, King. King isn't one of those that has this like grand backstory or anything. I just think that the personality of the character, how he's kind of like a... A good-hearted pro wrestler, Lucha Libre type. I think that's cool. I think the whole rivalry between him and Armored King is cool. Um, he's just a fun character. You know, this big, muscly guy, uh, pro wrestler, Lucha Libre. His his whole gimmick is, of course, like Tiger Mask, you know. Uh, that, that all is very cool to me. I think he's inspired by Tiger Mask, too, uh, now that I'm thinking about it. But more into the point... Um, yeah, I know, I, I just like the character, the personality of the character, and he's a really good grapple-type character in the game. A lot of his grapples and throws do big damage, so he is definitely, um... I'll go on to expand with this when I get to Craig Marduk, but he's kind of like the grappling version of Craig Marduk, where Craig Marduk is really good at throwing big, powerful, strong hits, and, you know, he's maybe not great in the means of mobility or stuff and maybe his grappling leaves a bit to be desired but on the whole his free fighting his punches and kicks are really fun to do because you just feel like a monster you feel like a tank almost like gigas right kind of concurrent characters there um so you know or sorry adjacent characters uh so yeah that, that's that's a fun aspect of that character i think king is kind of like that but specifically with grappling he's got some good free fighting attacks like his drop kick and everything but i think he really shines with his grappling so you know the character's good character's okay to play nice next up is steve steve is another one i'm gonna put in noise right because uh he's got a bit of an interesting backstory right it's not like the most interesting backstory in the world but he's got this whole thing going on with how uh, Nina Williams is his mom, and, like, there's, whole, like, this whole mystery going on, and, like, he was, like, in the labs or whatever, uh, so Steve, Steve's backstory is at least better than bare bones or nothing, uh, so there's, like, a bit of intrigue and mystery to it, um, but also he's a boxer, it's, like, a classic style, everybody knows about it, and it's a really good style, right, especially in this game, a lot of free fighting involved, not a lot of ground game or grappling or anything like that. I mean, you do have characters like King and a couple of, uh, a couple of others on here, but mainly the game is about free fighting. So, like, strikes, punches, and kicks, stuff like that. And he really shines in that. He is a pressure monster. This man, if, if, you, if you really know how to play him, I'm decent with him, but I'm not a technical player. But if you were a technical player, if you were good at combos, you were good at things like canceling out of attacks and, and evading around, he could be an easy W character. Easily. Easily he'd be in, like, the god tier. Um, but I'm just not that good at the game. Sucks to suck. I, I can admit it. I'm not going to try to fight anybody on it. But uh, I think that's a good place for, for old Steve there because he's a, he's a really good character, especially if you know how to use him. And, you know, he's got a bit of intrigue and mystery to his backstory. 
All right, next up, we'll do Paul. Paul, where are you in your old Bart Simpson flat top head ass? Uh, all right, I guess. Sucks, because his buddy Martial Law is like two tiers away. But the reason why I put him here is I, I like his character. I like the whole thing he's got going on with Panda or Kuma. Can't remember which is which. Um, I think he's got a rivalry going on with one of them. I can't remember which one it is for the life of me. But um, Paul, Paul is a funny looking character. Uh, I enjoy his design not because I think it looks cool or it's aesthetically pleasing, but because it's funny, which I think was the intended purpose. The dude's got a french fry flat top on his head. His head looks like a block of wood. Uh, he's got like this American flag leather biker outfit going on. Uh, he's a very funny, interesting character. He's got this whole like friendship with martial law and they go around the world doing the goofiest shit. Um, but... But, I say that to say this, I'm trash with this character. I'm so bad with this character. So I can't in good conscience justify noise just because I like the character. I like his personality. Because I'm so bad with this character. Uh, I'm literally, literally one of my tactics is just spamming that really big hit he does. And I always get fucked. So, uh, yeah, he's going to have to settle for alright, I guess. And next we'll do Jin and Devil Jin. Jin first. I'm gonna be honest. I don't actually play this character a lot. Uh, he's like the main character, Tekken Seven, kinda. Uh, so mm, I think I'll put him in all right, I guess, because I mean he's the main character, and he's the kind of cool character. I understand that he had to do something very bad. He had to like basically start that horrible war and. And cause all that death and violence and destruction. But he did it for a good reason. Because he could, you know, uh, attack and destroy uh, Zazel, I think it was. That that big monster he had to fight in Tekken 6. So, I understand why he did what he did. But of course, you know, he's uh, he's a little bit of a Sasuke character, right? He's, he's a little bit of a moody, edgy, teen bad guy. Uh, good guy. So, there is that. It's like, oh... I'm the bad guy because I start wars and people die because of me. But I'm also the good guy because I just want to help people. And I, I, I only did those bad things to help people. So, you know, but I have to keep that to myself because I, I won't justify myself to anybody. So, some, some fucking edgy teen shenanigans like that. He's the bad guy, good guy. So, the character archetype is alright, I guess. But uh, I don't really have a lot of experience with the character. So, I can't say one way or another. Now, for Devil Jin... I don't have any more experience with Devil Jin than I do Normal Jin. I have about equal experience with the both of them. Don't really play them much. But, I will say this. The thing that puts Devil Jin in noise and kind of gives him the edge here is because I think that's cool. I think it's like, um, that is the only playable version. That's the only, like, character that you could select because for uh, Katsumi, I think her name is... And uh, for Kazuya, you have to transform into their devil forms, whereas with Jin, you can just outright select his devil form. Uh, and so I think that's cool. It's almost like uh, to, to kind of draw a reference from Dragon Ball. It's almost like, you know, you'd have, like, um, Vegeta and Gohan and, uh, I don't know, fucking Nappa, the, the strongest of all the Super Saiyans. Um, but it's like having access to Goku. And Super Saiyan 1 Goku. So while Vegeta uh, and Gohan uh, and Nappa have to go Super Saiyan, they have to transform. You know, Vegeta you know, flashes to Super Vegeta and he gets all bulky and muscly. Gohan can go Super Saiyan, but he'd probably go Ultimate. He'd turn Mystic. Um, and then, of course, Nappa, his little, <laughs> his little fucking uh, mustache glows yellow. And he's like, ah, I've transformed! Um, <laughs> yeah, instead of that, you know, you can just start off the gate in like your strongest form it's like oh this isn't even my final form yet and be like uh yes bitch it is so i think that's pretty cool but again i don't have a little a whole lot of experience with the character and the backstory is just kind of meh next up is claudio claudio is an interesting character because he is sus as fuck he's like red in among us he is sus as fuck uh i have minimum experience with him uh as far as playing him is another one that i haven't touched a lot you can't Look, guys, you can't expect me to have played every single character on the entire roster. We've gotten through a vast majority of the characters I have played, so you'll have to excuse me. A lot of the characters are going to end up 
on the lower end just because I've never fucking played them before. What can I do? How can I judge how good I am at playing the character if I've only played with the character for like a round or two? There are some characters on this list that I have never touched. It's just a fact of life. Y'all gonna have to accept it and roll with it because we're gonna roll on. So Claudio. Claudio is sus. He's got some suspicious activity going on during the campaign. I don't really know a whole lot about him with his uh, serious style execution uh, martial art. So, he seems like a good character, but he may have ulterior motives or something may be going on with him. So, I do like his backstory and stuff because I feel like it's intriguing, but I don't have a lot of experience with the character, so... Looks like you and your happy tattoo ass are just going to have to sit in all right, I guess. Nearing the end of the list, we have Gigas. Another character I haven't played, but I mean, the play style. I, I, I can probably see how well I do with the character because it's not like the play style is that complex or intricate. He hit thing good. That's He's the juggernaut. He's the Hulk. He's the thing. He's the guy that you call to hit thing good. So I'll put him in noise. Seems pretty, you know, basic. Like, if if you hit thing good, you are good with character. Uh, and then there's, that, of course, that whole backstory that he may be Katarina. He may be Katarina's husband that has been uh, experimented on by... I can't remember if it was the Mishima Zaibatsu or if it was Kazuya's organization. But one of the two experimented, possibly, on Katarina's husband and schlottined his ass. Turned him into some ugly tomato man. But... More into the point, I think that the brute force type character has a place in every single martial arts form of media. You have to you you have to have the guy who thinks he can beat all the martial arts with just raw physical strength, or who at least tries, or something like that. You have to have a, an accurate representation of the things somebody with raw physical power can do to fight a martial artist. In Baki, we have Oliva. In Kengen, we have Julius. In Tekken, we have Gigas. We all, in, in, in most forms of martial arts media, there is a big, tough, strong guy, and you have to watch his dynamic with the, with the martial artist, you know? He has no skill, but he's got a shit ton of raw power, so that's something to be on the lookout for. So I appreciate the character archetype, his backstory is interesting, and I feel like I'd be pretty decent with him. Next up is Leo. I've... I've played a round or two with old Leo. <laughs> Where is he at, though? There he is. Uh, if I remember correctly, he practices uh, Bagua Zhang, uh, like a, a Chinese martial art. Um, his backstory is kind of interesting, but for some reason, it kind of um, it escapes me at the moment. I can't really think of it. Mm. Well, no matter. Um, he's a little bit off-putting to me. Because everyone always mistakes him as like a female, and um, these uh, these femboys do be out here wilding. So uh, I'll put him there. I don't have a ton of experience with the character, but he seems decent. Uh, the character design is interesting. He kind of reminds me of Link, yeah, <clears throat> Link from Legend of Zelda. So th I mean, I think that's interesting. I, I don't dislike the design. Uh, the martial art is pretty cool. Uh, I'm decent with the character from what I remember, but I don't remember a lot, so I, I don't have the memory, the confidence in my memory to put him in noise. Uh, so he'll just have to settle. Alright, next we have Feng. As much, as much as I would love to put him in easy W tier because he's based off of Retsukayo from Baki, as much as I would love to put him here, I gotta put him here. I'm not that great with the character. I do enjoy the kind of, the almost Yujiro-esque background for this character. The fact that he's based on Retsukayo is like fucking jackpot level bonus points. Uh, you just won the lottery there. But I'll have to put him in noise because I don't have a whole lot of experience with the character. I don't remember being particularly good with him. Nothing like any of these guys up here. Um, he's just got a really, he's got like a 10 out of 10 in aesthetic, in design, and his backstory is pretty interesting too. I think he's got like a rivalry going on with Asuka. So, uh, I don't know the whole spielio going on there, but it is what it is. Alright, next is Eddie. How many female characters have I put on here? I don't think I've put a single one yet. Oh well, okay, let's try... Uh, before we get to Eddie, let's... Um, 
Uh, she's a really good character, and I like her design. Uh, she's okay, and I like her design. I'm not too good with her, but I like her design. <laughs> best waifu in the world. Yeah, best waifu. Not in Tekken 7, but best waifu. Let's let's not let's not front there. Um, okay. Eliza, I'm actually pretty damn good with Eliza. Uh, she's the pre-order character, so I've had a lot of time to practice with her. Um, but uh, she is definitely uh, waifu material, absolutely. Uh, and I'm not that bad with her. Josie, Josie, I'll put here. Uh, I like her character. She's like the like a funny, charming, innocent young woman. Um, I was a little surprised that she spoke English because if I remember correctly, she's uh, she's from the Philippines. So it was a little interesting to find that she spoke English. But regardless, uh, I do like her design. I do like her personality. I like her little uh, headband that she wears. I think that's interesting. And, you know, I'm not too bad at using Josie. Uh, Julia. Uh, I'll be honest. I've not had a lot of experience playing Julia. But because of her backstory and her relationship with Ganryu and her kind of tie-in to most of the characters, as well as her design. Her design is one of my favorite out of the female characters. Uh, I think it's I think it's apt to put her in nice. And who else we got? Katarina, good design, decent backstory, but I don't know a whole lot about how she plays. Kasumi, I'm not actually that. I mean, her 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 backstory may, might put her up in one of these tiers. I wouldn't be entirely opposed to it because she's got one of the most in depth backstories for a female character in these games. But not that great with her. <laughs> I fought a lot of people that are good at using her to destroy me, which kind of makes me a little salty. I've got I've got a bit of salt uh, about that, but regardless, the design is the design is okay, but it doesn't really pop for me. Uh, the mother daughter combo. Actually, the mother is not in the game. I'll do the daughter because the mother's not in the game, uh, and they would probably end up in the same spot anyway. Put her here. I've never played this character, but I've seen gameplay of her. She looks really good. I'll probably be shit with her, but her backstory of being Kunimitsu's daughter and, you know, her rivalry with, of course, Yoshimitsu and and I think she works with Master Raven uh, and Raven and all of them. Um, so that's kind of interesting. She's got the, you know, as you'd expect from a traditional looking uh, ninja, she's kind of got the traditional ninja background, you know. Her, her mother before her was basically the same character that she serves to be in this game so that that's interesting uh let's see we have lily ah, i'm kind of garbage with the character the backstory is kind of meh she's just a snobby rich girl who's trying to get along with you know asuka she's got like a rivalry with asuka but uh she didn't really pop for me any also she may be related to eliza that's interesting lucky chloe good design okay we'll drop her here good design uh, weird character because she's like um she's like happy go lucky you know you'd expect lucky Chloe but as we see with uh with uh her interaction with Eddie Goro, uh or Eddie Gordo, um in Tekken Seven she uh she's really down to brass tacks and she's very serious about certain things so it's it's, it's kind of like it's almost a persona you cannot trust these e thoughts right. She looks like a Twitch streamer, I know, so uh, y'all y'all be on your guard here, all right? I don't, I don't trust it. It's sus. She's another red. She's another red from Among Us. That's sus. Uh, we got Master Raven. Uh, she is... Uh, she's got a great design. Uh, it's also cool that she's like the master of Raven. Is Master Raven? Where, where'd he go? He, he's around here somewhere. There he is. Master Raven. No, I'm kidding. Uh, there he is. So, I think she, uh, she's a cool character. I'm okay with her. Not bad, but uh, in in my like experience with her, like playing her, she's like a worse version of Yoshimitsu. That's not to say that she's a worse character. Um, that somebody with Raven, Master Raven, couldn't be better than Yoshimitsu, or that in general she's not better. But I'm better with Yoshimitsu than I am with Master Raven, and they serve similar purposes. Uh, so that's where she ends up. Let's see who we got next. Nina. Ooh, I'll put Nina here. 
her design is okay. She's got a lot of backstory tie-ins. Like, she's, like, the right-hand man of Heihachi. She is Steve's mother. She has something to do with Leo, if I remember correctly. Uh, she's just got a whole lot going on. Uh, but as far as, like, gameplay, yeah, I wouldn't necessarily put her above her sister. Where is Nina? There she is. Or, uh, there's Nina. There's Anna. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't, I would not put Nina above Anna. They're about the same. Uh, okay, Panda. Panda, we got another girl in the noise tier. I'm just about as good with Panda as I am with Kuma. And, uh, I like, uh, again, her design is phenomenal. It looks so realistic. Uh, and I do like her whole thing with, um... Uh... Oh, God, I'm gonna kick myself. I can't remember her name. Uh, I'll just throw it up on screen to avoid spending too much time trying to remember. But, um... Yeah, I do like her whole friendship thing there, and it's it's very sweet and wholesome, and like her constant rejections of Kuma, uh, it's a big part of her character. I think that's very cool, she's a very decent character, and admittedly, she's probably the character I'm the best with out of all the females on the roster. I think my best male character is, it's definitely one of these four, I'd probably say it's Lee, or Law, one of those two. Uh, and she's definitely my best female character. Um, uh, okay. I think that's... Oh, wait, no, of course we have these three down here. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, no, I'm not very good with her. I can't remember her name for the life of me, but I do like the character. Uh... Just to avoid being murdered, I'm gonna put her in the alright, I guess, here, because she's got a good design... Uh, I liked her whole story with uh, with Jin in the last game, and how she was so quintessential to that whole operation of, of getting Azazel to wake up and defeating him or whatever. Um, but I've never played her before, and I don't really intend to, beyond like the normal, just kind of playing her to get like used to, or playing the character, or just playing it for fun. Uh, and then we have the last character, she actually looks really cool, I'll put her in noise tier. Uh, because I've never played her, I've never played with this character before, and her backstory leaves a bit to be desired, she's just the Prime Minister of Poland, uh, but nobody was excited about this character when she came out, but when that reveal trailer dropped a couple days, weeks, whatever, uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, oh my god, she looks great, she practices actual karate, like real karate you'd see somebody in real life doing, uh, I watched, I watched the Jesse Endcamp video, uh, about her different like styles and stuff and like her using the kata and bunkai of actual karate Looks like a really cool character. I like her design. She kind of almost reminds me of like a female Geralt I think somebody made that joke I think it was Maximilian dude where he was like, oh give her a scar over her eye and now she's she's like um, You know from the same area as Geralt, you know, or not not Rivia of course But it's like a Swedish kind of Norway franchise the Witcher So oh, how do you how do we make her like Swedish and, and like, you know, Polish or whatever? Well, let's give her a scar over her eye. So I, I do think that's kind of funny, but I like her design I think she looks awesome um, And I like her style of fighting it looks really good Everything right now is like solely riding on the aesthetics because of course I've never played the character but I think she deserves to be in noise. I was even tempting to put her in easy W's, but I mean, I can't really say I can put her in easy W's because I've never played her before. Okay, and I think that's every Tekken 7 lady. So we can continue on the list with Eddie Goro. There we go. I'll have to put him in all right, I guess. I'm really not that good. A lot of the people, he suffers from the same disease as, um, uh, Kasumi, in that a lot of the people that use this character are way better at using the character against me than I am against them. Um, but I think he's a fun character. I like his whole little backstory uh, with like trying to help the orphanage and everything. Now, of course, if I get a couple of details wrong, you guys will have to tell me in the comment section down below because it's been a long time since I've played Tekken consistently, so I don't remember a lot of the details of people's backstories and stuff, but... Aesthetically, he looks cool. If what I'm remembering is actually his backstory, it was a cool backstory. I liked the character. Uh, I'm just not all that great with them. Next, we'll go Craig Marduk. Yeah, I'm going to put him in the same tier as King, because like I mentioned earlier, 
Um, he, he's more like a Hulk Hogan type or like a Macho Man Randy Savage, like an old like 90s American pro wrestler where he's very you know energetic and you know he's not really the good guy so to speak but like very rough and tumble or rough and rumble and ready to tumble or whatever it is uh, but yeah in terms of game gameplay at least with my experiences he's basically the free fighting version of king king focuses on grapples and he's got very strong grapples and throws and and pins and stuff whereas craig's got really good punches and kicks he's more inclined to you know punch and kick the opponent to deal his damage now that's not to say that king doesn't have good free fighting and Craig doesn't have good grapples. It's just that they clearly specialize in opposing styles of like pro wrestling. So Craig is pretty cool. Um, I also like his his uh, particularly for this character. I liked his cameo for Faku um reveal trailer, where he like just pummels Faku Rum and he's he's doing nothing, and Faku Rum just kind of looks down at him and he's like, "Okay, are you are you done, Chief?" Because like. Uh, this is my reveal trailer, and Craig, Craig Marduk realized he wasn't the main character, and he realized that he fucked up. So, very cool character, uh, very fun character to play. Nice. Next is Geese. Geese is another character kind of like Akuma, where I found it was cool that they added like the main bad guy of a, a different, you know, titular or not not titular, but like very well known fighting game. Uh, you know, King of Fighters and Fatal Fury. You know those games, the the SNK games. Uh, yeah, I'll put him in noise. He's got good ranged options um, in his Rashomon, and you can spam the shit out of that and annoy the shit out of everyone, kind of like with Akuma's Hadoken. Um, but also, you know, he's got pretty good uh, close game. His medium and close game is good. He's a decent zoner, uh, and I just like the character. I learned a bit about his backstory with, like, his whole, like, you know, his ties to, the, like, a criminal background and, you know, his, his ties to the Bogar brothers and... I just think all the little details about him are pretty cool. So I'll put him in noise tier. All right. <laughs> Look out, boys. we got another god tier coming through. Here comes Noctis. Here we go. Easy Ws. Is anyone surprised? The the dude that was clearly meant to be in Soul Calibur, clearly meant to be in Soul Calibur, ended up in Tekken. And now we have, you know, we, we have some people who use weapons. We got Yoshimitsu. We got Master Raven. We got people on this list that use weapons. She got a damn bazooka, for God's sake. But this dude is not just a weapons user. He uses all the weapons all the time. So, I mean, what did you guys expect? He uses magic, he flies, he has many, like, dozens of weapons. What, what, where did you expect him to be on this list? Did any of you expect him to be bad when he came out? Did you, any of you expect him to not be a top tier? I'm confused. He, he, he's an easy W character, a, a toddler could win against a professional if they're using Noctis Lucius Calum. All right, and next up is Wei Wu Long. This character I was actually highly anticipating when I saw that he was coming out. I didn't know much about the character when he first came out. Yeah, that's right, Easy W. We got another Easy W DLC character. Um, we have two guest characters in in Easy Dub and one guest character in Noise. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, I was really looking forward to Wei, Lu, uh, Wei Wu Long. Um, because he practices animal style. I thought that was really cool. I thought his animal style looked really good. I looked back into the, the history of the character, how he was like Shanghai police. I think the character is cool. I think he's very charming as a character. He quite a bit reminds me of martial law. And uh, as you know, any friend of martial law is a friend of mine. Uh, but yeah, I thought he was a cool character. I liked his personality. I liked his aesthetic, his whole kind of, kind of middle-aged cop aesthetic. Uh, and his style was super cool. And when I played him, I haven't played him a lot, but the bit I have played him, he was good. I, I felt good. I was comfortable with him. So I think he deserves to be in the easy W tier. Next up, we got Armored King. Yeah, I'm going to have to put him in the same tier as King. Uh, it's pretty much a lot of the same. He maybe isn't as strong or as good at grappling, but what he lacks in you know wrestling skill he makes up for in his gimmicks like he's got his his breath attack from his mask and everything and you know he's got his armor on and stuff i i think it's it's generally the same kind of deal it's almost like if i had goku on this list i'd have to put vegeta in the same tier that's kind of how they are it's king and armored king their rival is eternal 
you know, or their rivalry is eternal. And it's uh, easily the most important event that has ever happened in Tekken history ever. What, fucking Jin fighting the god of evil or whatever? Nah, nah, get that out of here. That's whack. These two? Most important event ever. So yeah, they go in the noise tier together. Next is Leroy. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me just um, yeah, let me just uh, get this up. Add a row above. Let's go here. Leroy. And you know, I've never played this character before. Are you shocked? You should be. I've never played this character before, but I remember hearing people talk about for months how this character broke the game he was just destroying everyone and you know i keep using that word i keep using that word was he still is from from what i understand he is still breaking the game he is still destroying everything um so yeah i mean he's, he's in a tier of his own i've never played the character and i'm pretty sure i could beat everybody i ever faced that's not using leroy with leroy i could probably do it with one hand the man is just too much he is too strong. They've tried to nerf him from what I remember, and it, it just did not work. He 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 literally beat their nerfs. They tried to nerf him, he challenged the nerf to a fight and won. Also, his character design is dope as shit. He's got like the the like the nineties gangster, you know, you know, gold chains from his neck. He's got like the the very traditional Chinese martial arts swagger, you know, an old black guy, but he's got like the, the Chinese martial arts swag. Uh, and just watching his Wing Chun is so entertaining. The character is like a 10 out of 10. Alright. Next up is Ganryu. I gotta say... Not really vibing with Ganryu. I thought the design was okay. He kind of reminds me of... Uh, God, I can't remember his name. But the uh, the uh, sumo wrestler from Street Fighter. Uh, they, they kind of remind me of each other. But more into the point... I don't know, Gunryu, I've, I've never really played the character, I'm not familiar with all the backstory, like him and his relationship with Julia, he seems kind of like a fucking simp, if you ask me, but, uh, uh yeah, I mean, I, I don't fuck with simps, he's alright, I guess, you know, Sumo's pretty cool, and Gunryu's got some history in this game, so let's not, let's not disrespect my boy, but, uh, anyway, you suck. Uh, so, oh my goodness, I think I forgot Negan. Uh, Negan is, uh, mm, he's a really good character. He's pretty powerful. Lucille is a very powerful weapon, for sure. But, um, I never watched The Walking Dead. I never really had any interest in it. I don't think Negan is a very good fit for Tekken. Uh, but I do like the character. I do like the actor that plays Negan. Uh, and I, I do think that he is a, a powerful character. And I do like the aesthetic and his kind of, you know, Bad guy Moxie, he's another one of those those kind of charismatic bad guys. But I can't really put him in easy W's because I don't really agree with a, a lot about the character. And I'm not that good with him. I'm decent, but I'm not like martial law levels of good. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, the last entry in our list. Combat. No, I'm kidding. It's Faki Rum. Um, he was, he was another one who was really good. Um... Yeah, I'll put him in easy W. He was another one that a lot of people were telling me was really good, and I have very, very limited experience playing this character, but, I mean, he was so good from what I remember. He was a very powerful character. It was very easy to get wins with this character. Uh, I guess one might even say it was easy to get a W with that character. Um, and, of course, the thing that everyone was saying, everyone was either Team Sagat or Team Jack Hanma when Faku Rim came out, Everyone was like, it was like, it was like 90% of the comment section on every Faki Rim video. Oh, there's Jack Hanma or the, oh, there's Sagat. And then like the other, like, like 5% was like, ha ha, you Rim sounds like fuck. <laughs> and then the other 5% was, you know, something that actually had to do with the character or the game. But his backstory of like him being like a monster TIE fighter um, and like having his, ha his, his family held hostage. Uh, that's interesting. I think that's a, a decent backstory. Uh, and hopefully in further installments of Tekken, we'll get, like, uh, his backstory expounded upon. Hopefully he's in, like, a one-off character. But he's a powerful character to play. I like his design because he reminds me of Jack Hanma. Um, it's not quite on the level of, of actually being inspired by Retsu Kaio. But still, I think that's pretty cool. And, uh, of course, his backstory is less than shallow. Or, excuse me, excuse me, it's more than shallow, sorry. 
Um, so yeah, I think I think with with just how good of a character he is, how decent his design is, and how okay his backstory is, I think he's been mainly jettisoned to EZW by his playability, but his character doesn't leave anything to be desired in my opinion. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the list. Fortunately, nobody made it into Fuck My Life. There were a few close calls there. Shaheen, I'm looking at you. But uh, for the most part, I think everybody on this list... Get out of here. I forgot I had you there. Get... No. You you go here. This is your punishment, old man. Uh, the future is now, old man. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, I, I think uh, this is a pretty accurate list to describe how good uh, these characters are when I get my hands on them. But also, this is the objectively correct list for how these characters rank and how good they are. And if you say I'm wrong, your face is stupid. Got him. But yeah, so that, that, that's, that's, that's it for this list. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the video. I hope you guys at least somewhat agree with this list. Maybe you have a few of these that are like, oh yeah, I'm really good with that character too. Or, ah oh, yeah, you know, I'm not the best with that character either. I can kind of uh, sympathize with you. Uh, I hope I you know, made a decent list in you guys' opinion, um, because I definitely value your opinion. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's gonna do it for me, guys. Thank you all for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did. Comment down below on what kind of tier lists you want me to do next, or if you guys want to see me play Tekken. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to stick around, become part of the family, and, uh, hit the notification bell if you want to know when new videos are getting dropped and getting released. So, yeah, I guess I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.